Friday, October 27th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at how Western governments are borrowing from future generations to embellish economic data. And I'm going to focus on the U.S. and the, the great GDP uh, number, right, that came out yesterday. The economy grew at a rate of 4.9% year on year. So why are people concerned about recession? Uh, why are tax, uh, income tax revenues actually dropping in the U.S.? It's all very confusing, right? But hopefully I'll uh, make it simple for you. You might, might not agree with me, but I, I think numbers don't lie. Before I start, I'd like to say that we will be doing the Mike and Mario show today from uh, noon Eastern time. Yes, circumstances ha have made it so that uh, we haven't been able to do it for a few weeks. I, I was away uh, in Turkey. I had an eye operation last Friday, but we're back today. And also, I'd like to uh, ask you if you haven't yet to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy watching my videos. Yeah, and make sure you, you share my videos with, with people that might be interested uh, in what I have to say. And, and what is really the uh, purpose of my channel? Well, it's to wake people up uh, about the uh, fraudulent nature of our currency system because it's not even a monetary system. We haven't really had one. Um, in some form since August 15th, 1971. And also to wake people up about economics, that uh, governments cannot act irresponsibly. Uh, they need to act like uh, households. Uh, I mean, if you and I uh, borrowed uh, up to here all the time, didn't go to work, uh, <laughs> had to keep borrowing to keep uh, a semblance of... Uh, uh, prosperity, uh, our household would collapse, and, and uh, it's not any different for governments. And that's why I'm going to cover the top this topic today uh, about economic growth, about statistics being embellished by borrowing from the future, by uh, actually taxing you today as well. So, as I said, it, it's not just uh, the United States that's doing that. But I'm going to focus on the U.S. because it's the biggest economy in the world. It's the leader of the West. It still has uh, the reserve currency of the world, even though that's changing quickly, as we know. But uh, I'm going to start, actually, with something very simple. It's the equation for cal calculating gross domestic product, or GDP, and one thing I would say, the kind of uh, world that I believe is more just, fair, and prosperous would not need economic uh, data. <laughs> and why? Well, because governments in the last 80 years, uh, they focused on economic data because governments are getting bigger and bigger. They're taxing more. They're spending more. So they need to keep track of what the economy is doing so they can adjust their spending. It's like a big corporation. But in a more ideal world where government is minimal, where government allows the private sector to really take care of business, be it big corporations, be it small companies, be it mom and pop businesses, be it self-employed people, whatever, they're the ones that create the wealth, not government. So in a perfect world, as I said, economic uh, statistics from the government would be really something that we wouldn't look at, we wouldn't need to look at. But governments, they need it in order to basically adjust their taxation, spending and borrowing and in order to use it as propaganda to say, oh, look how, how well everything is going, right? So I'm going to start with a GDP uh, equation. It's very simple. GDP equals consumption. That's very easy to understand. Plus investment. And by investment, they mean private uh, sector investment. Uh, 
Uh, yes, I know government uh, governments come out and say we're going to invest in this, but no, governments don't invest. Uh, the only people that invest that invest are people who are able to save in the private sector, and from those savings they invest. And in order to save, it's really hard. <laughs> you have to be doing something productive. You, you have to be frugal and you have to have enough savings, right? So government, when they say they're investing, that's rubbish. They spend wastefully and they do a, a lot of other things that are not good. I'm not going to go over that on this in this video. But anyway, it, so consumption plus investment. And they, they also add government spending to it. And that's the crux of the matter here for today's video. And they add net exports, which is uh, exports minus imports. And of course, the US and the UK, for that matter, we, we've been running uh, current account deficits for decades. So that actually takes away from GDP. But government spending, if the government spends a lot in the private sector, is actually not doing really well. It will help that GDP number. And do you really think that government spending is the best way to run an economy? Because government has to take from the private sector to, to spend. And when uh, bureaucrats, politicians use other people's money, they don't care what kind of spending they do. We, we've seen that during crises, during wars. Uh, spending gets out of hand. It, it, it goes to all their cronies, right? So yesterday we, we got this number uh, that GDP <laughs> grew at 4.9% year on year for the third quarter. It was expected at 4.2, which would have been also a very strong number. But People are waking up and uh, I, I've got several examples here and I've been speaking about this for years, even under the previous administration. Um, they were running uh, budget deficits uh, around 6% of GDP or 5% in 2019. And, and what's the problem with that? Well, if the government spends 6% more like they're doing now. Actually, it's almost 7% of GDP. We had a 1.7 trillion deficit the last fiscal year. Uh, so if they're spending 7% of the economy extra and they're borrowing to do that, and that's aside from the taxes they get from you. Well, if you eliminated that 7% uh, deficit, and let's say government uh, we're doing something that's right, like running a balanced budget. Well, that would take away 7% from that GDP number because it's 7% uh, of GDP. So if you take 4.9 and you subtract 7 from it, you get a negative number. So the actual real economy is not growing. If anything, it's still <laughs> in a recession. And I think it has been since 08 because we've had a lot of deficit spending. We've had a lot of money printing since that time. But people are waking up to it. It's not just uh, Maneco 64. And I've been covering this GDP equation and trying to show people for years that GDP uh, or economic growth, as they call it, is not really um, any good. Prior to the pandemic in 2020, the only country uh, or a couple of countries that were actually running a budget surplus and their GDP was still growing were Germany and Switzerland. Of course, that, that's out the window now. But uh, yeah, as I said here, uh, I'm going to go through quickly through through some tweets that I, I've seen. So Gold Telegraph, Janet Yellen is the biggest economic clown in a circus that never stops. Uh, and this is a quote from um, Daniela uh, DiMartino Booth. She's an ex-Fed, uh, Dallas Fed employee. And she's usually quite balanced. And this is what she said about Janet Yellen. She's a delusional national embarrassment. Um, another one here from John, Joe Consorti. U.S. annual interest expense just hit $981 billion almost a trillion. 
So yes, they're, they're borrowing from you. Uh, they're indebting you, your children, grandchildren, to show strong economic data, 4.9% GDP growth. Sven Henrik, Northman Trader, Q3, Q3 GDP, government defense spending up 8%, government non-defense spending up 3.9%. Sven Henrik again, 4.9% GDP, amazing what a $2 trillion deficit plus $600 billion in debt issuance in one month can do. Sven Henrik again, and here he notes the private sector, right? Uh, the, 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 the sector that creates real wealth, the sector from which the government taxes and borrows, Gross, and this is for the third quarter, gross private domestic investment, fixed investment up 0.8, non-residential down 0.1, structures 1.6, equipment down 3.6. And he says, while consumers are still spending, this GDP growth figure is heavily greased by government debt finance spending, not a true read on the organic economy by organic economy of course he means private sector oh someone else here <laughs> james marchese I, I don't follow this guy but i found this the problem is inflation is up 14 percent in the last two plus years so the gdp is a reflection of negative 10 percent in prod product productivity and good services purchased Worse, Bidenomic means, well, I think he meant 1.7, not 1.4. Trillion is borrowed, deficit spending by government, or 6% of GDP. So 4.9% is really negative. Great, there you go. Someone is uh, woke him up, woken up to what I've been saying for years. Uh, and then I just wanted to show you the uh, US debt clock, and you're going to have to go into it. Um, to see how income tax revenue is actually dropping. You have to wait a few seconds to see the number actually dropping while the national debt, <laughs> that's not dropping. That hasn't dropped for, well, since uh, 1835. I think that was the last time that Andrew Jackson uh, paid the national debt off to zero. And what does that mean that the income tax revenue is dropping? Well, <laughs> Normally, if an economy is doing really well, tax receipts should be going up. So this just proves that this number is just a joke, unfortunately. Of course, those of you who watch my channel or other, other people or follow people that are in the know, who know what's really going on, they're not going to be fooled. But I would say the great majority of people out there they're watching CNN, Fox, CNBC, whatever, and they're going to be told, well, the U.S. economy is going gangbusters, 4.9%. And then Janet Yellen had the gall to say that uh, bond yields are going up because it's reflecting a strong economy. No, it's reflecting the fact that foreigners are stopping uh, the purchases of treasuries, that you're running huge deficits <laughs> and investors uh, know that uh, you're going to have to issue trillions upon trillions in the next fixed fiscal year, and there are no captive buyers out there. So she's really, uh, that's why DiMartino Booth said she was an embarrassment. And the other thing that's worrying that she said, that we've ha we have a soft landing for the economy. This is the woman who said, I think in 2015, that doing quantitative tightening would be like watching paint dry, and then we had the uh, repo crisis in 2019 because of QT, and we had the 2020 crash. She's also the woman who, after the 2020 crash, said that we wouldn't see another financial crisis in her lifetime or our lifetimes. And lo and behold, we had a banking collapse earlier this year. So there you go, Janet Yellen. Uh, I wonder if she's related to Jim Cramer. But anyway, uh, with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. 
It's 8.23 a.m. London time. We've got spot gold at 1987.30. It's up just over $2. The high's been 90, the low 82. Uh, silver is up, well, it's unchanged at 22.80. High's been 94, low 75. And quickly, someone uh, sent, I have an email on my channel for business uh, inquiries. If you really want to ask me questions, I recommend you join my Patreon. You can do it for as little as a dollar a month and you can send me messages privately there. Sometimes I can't answer all the questions in the comment section. And uh, someone asked me about uh, if the futures markets are a better reflection of what's going to happen in terms of prices. Well, not really. All the futures market is, is a uh, derivative market of, say, gold or uh, commodities. And uh, all it means is that uh, you're buying something for delivery in one, two, or three months, or you're selling something, you know, to deliver in one, two, or three months, and you fix a price. And, and the reason why the futures price for gold right now like the December futures is higher and has been trading above 2000 is because of the cost of storing for until December. And to uh, calculate the cost of storing and the cost of carrying that contract, that futures contract, you have to uh, discount the interest rate. Interest rates now are at five. So you have to, you know, the, the money that you put aside to buy that futures contract, the you know, you have to say, what if I put that in a deposit, right? And, and then the cost of storing uh, the gold for the person who's selling to you. And, and that's why the price is higher. But it doesn't mean that uh, the price of gold is going to be at that level in December. It could fluctuate. So that's all the futures market is. And it started out really for uh, agricultural commodities so that farmers, producers could lock in prices. And of course, speculators got involved and then they created futures markets for for things like financial assets. And uh, truthfully, they, they've kind of abused these futures markets because it's highly leveraged. So I'll stop at that. So the Dow futures is up 50 points. The uh, NASDAQ futures is up 110 points and the S&P uh, is up 20 points. So stock market had a bad day yesterday. It seems to be rebounding a little bit here uh, before the US opening. Uh, currencies are pretty much unchanged uh, with the exception maybe of the dollar that's down a little bit versus the yen. It's still above 150 though, but it's pretty calm. Um, let's see the other currencies here if anything is going on. Uh, Aussie dollar is up a quarter of a percent, 63.36. Uh, dollar is unchanged versus the Canadian. Yeah, and the Kiwi dollar is unchanged. Quickly go through the commodities. WTI crude is actually up 1.3% at 84.12. Brent is up 1.2 at 88.15. Uh, platinum is up six bucks at 911. And high grade copper is up three quarters of of a percent at 363. We'll finish off with the bond markets. The 10 year yield is up four basis points at 488. That's the other thing as well. If the economy was really strong, I, I would have expected the, the, bond, the 10 year yield yesterday to have gone up, sailed through 5%. It didn't, it came down. And I think the market knows that the economy is not that strong. So the Japanese 10-year yield is kind of under control at the moment. It's trading around 0.87. We're going to keep an eye on that, of course. And the UK uh, two-year uh, yield is at 485. So they've been managing to keep that under 5%, which to me is very surprising. I, I think it's only a matter of time that it goes back up. The 30-year, though, is at uh, 512 with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day and a very good weekend. Take care. Bye.